scrapey pad. I guess technically that makes this a Bolt Chicago. on series video. Chicago. On series. I'm gonna turn rich. This makes me a customizer. In my opinion, that sucked. One of the first things we did in this FZ series is we actually put the steel braided brake lines on that we got from Core Moto, which is a great upgrade. It gives a much better brake feel and they last way longer than a rubber brake line. In fact, I think these are guaranteed for life. There's really not a whole lot more you can do on an FZ07's brakes. No one's really making a bigger rotor with a different caliber or anything like that. The only thing you can really do is actually swap the entire front end for like a super sport front end, maybe like an R6 or R1 front end. But one thing we can do is upgrade the brake pads. EBC double H pads. Honestly, they're really easy to put on. Brake pads or something you can do like that. You can almost think of the rotor as like the road and the pad is a set of tires. Kind of a weird analogy. Some brake pads are meant for longer life, and some are meant for more performance. It's just like a grippier tire. And that's similar to what's gonna happen with these pads. They'll wear out a little faster than like an OEM pad will, but in my opinion, it's worth it. I've had people tell me that these EBC double H pads are overly grippy. I don't know why people say that in the comments every time I throw some grippy, more high performance brake pads on. Maybe they're just the kind of person that's used to be able to slam on their brakes and their pads are so bad that the bike doesn't lock up. And then when they go to a better pad, it, they almost kill themselves. Before I get started, I actually have to kind of clean up the garage a little bit. As many of you know, I'm working on this thing right now, which is in pieces, and the toolbox is just a little overly crowded. I want to get in my new house early next year. Uh, one, I've got a shed that a lot of this stuff in here is gonna go into, like my, my lawn mowing equipment. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I'm just gonna get rid of. Let's clean up real fast. All right, there's a little clip right here. We grab a set of needle nose, we can just pop that right out. The other one's a little harder to get to sometimes. Push down on this just a little bit. That exposes the top of it more. Ha ha! Should just be able to push it out, but what I like to do is actually take a little Allen key like this. It's the smaller one. There we go. If you push down on it, you'll find it's a lot easier to pull out. Pull this off. They still had pretty good pad life left, uh, but for whatever reason, they just suddenly were not working at all. Sometimes pads can get contaminated, and it's probably just a good excuse to go ahead and switch over to the EBC. In most cases, your new pads are gonna be thicker than your old pads. You can kind of see right here that they're actually about the same size. Again, these were not that worn down, they just weren't working that well. So these will probably slot right in with no problem. But oftentimes, you do have to push these little pistons back inside of here. What we have to do is push these pistons back in. You start pushing one of these and another one will start pushing back out. They're all connected hydraulically. I'm gonna pump up the brake pads just a little bit here and see that? Oh, look how the one's going. I'm gonna push the lid on it a little bit more so it does, ah, the perfect example, look at this. See how that one's out? And then that one's up. So you gotta kind of press them all at once. I'm gonna try to evenly make them expand out a little bit here so I can demonstrate. This is more like what you would see if your brakes were a little bit worn down. If you've topped off your brake fluid, there's probably gonna be a little bit too much fluid in the system, in which case you could crack this and bleed a little bit out. Now, you probably are gonna have to re-bleed your brakes. If you go watch my brake video and I put these on, I show how I bled them. There's some really cool tools, but you could just do it by hand. Usually there's just a small bit of air in there if you do that. As far as pressing them back out, there are some automotive tools, but they normally don't work super well for this application. Now, since these old pads are just gonna go in the trash, what I would tell you to do is just go ahead and stick them back in there. Now, they're extremely tight now because I pumped them up, but get you a little flathead, kind of pry it back open. We're doing this to the old brake pad. You could do this on a new set as well if you ever had to, just do it very gently. Don't try not to gouge it or smash these. Now we've got them back open. Click, click. Click, click. This is like a little spring that goes on top here, and this is a pin that the pads kind of slide on. Before I stick them back on, I'm just gonna give them a quick spray off here, particularly this pin. Just get all the junk off of it. Whew, that stuff is strong. Jesus, what is this? Oh, it's starting fluid. <laughs> So any old car cleaner, brake cleaner will do. You don't gotta use starter fluid. Now be sure you put the left ones on the left and the right ones on the right. That's some itchy bond moto stuff right there. This part goes against the pistons and this part goes against the rotor. You should know that, but sometimes you gotta say these things. You can actually stick your finger right through the rotor here and kind of keep them from falling through because they literally will just fall. Put a little spring back in here and we slot our little pin back in. It has to go through the holes of the thing and under, there's a little tab in the middle of the spring here. I'll have to kind of push down on it a little bit to get it in place. 
is you're pushing it in, try to make sure you're keeping those little holes where you can see them, basically. Because if they're sitting like this, and you're not gonna be able to get the pins back in. These little clips are really beat up, obviously replace those. Pretty simple job. Pump your brakes back up. If you had to bleed them at all and you have any bit of a bubble in there, a soft spot, you're gonna have to keep bleeding them until they're absolutely perfect. Don't settle for it having a tiny bit of a bubble in there. Get them 100%. The rear. You need to remove this bolt and this bolt and actually pull the entire caliber off. But before we do that, I actually like to always loosen up this little pin right here. This is the pin we have to pull out to change the pads. And once you have this off in your hands, it's almost impossible to like hold this and unscrew this at the same time without, you know, you're gonna stab yourself. This thing is like a little cap. And these things strip so easy, so you really want to kind of bear into it. Yeah, an Allen bolt inside of here, or a hex bolt. This tool's getting in there, but the problem is, is it's not really deep enough. It's biting it, but not all the way, and I don't want to risk stripping this out. All right, there we go. That's getting in there perfect. I'm just going to loosen this up. Don't take it out yet. Just get it a bit loose. Now, using your old pads, you can wedge something in here. This one, you only have a single piston, so it's not like you have to really worry as much about it, pushing one piston down and pushing the other one up. And the way this actually works is those bolts that it was on, see they have a little bit of grease on them. The whole thing actually sort of slides back and forth as you hit the brake. So all your pressure comes from one side on the outside and then the whole thing kind of pushes over. Any kind of dual piston or anything where it's pushing both sides evenly is always a little bit better. Uh, but for a rear brake, this is totally fine. Grab our little Allen wrench here and go ahead and remove this bolt all the way. Clean up any of these black spots in here that you get from the brake dust. Wipe off this pin here that held the brake pads in. Don't have to be perfect. This is going to be, you know, most of this is exposed still, but we just want to get all the main grime and heavy duty stuff off of it. And any of these bolts here, there's this greased area, and they actually look pretty good on here. I'm not going to worry about that. Actually, it's good because that tells me that seal's working well. But if these were really grimy, you may even want to look at the little seals on the end here and consider replacing them. Just at least at minimum just clean it up and put some new grease on there. Now, these are only held on by one bolt on one end. The other side has a bit of a notch here and it kind of hooks into place. These pads would be sitting in there something like this. You can see where that piece notches in here and then the top of the caliber has another notch and that'll hold it down. So you have a bit of a juggling act when putting this all together because those to bottom of the pads will be trying to fall out. The easiest thing to do is just kind of stick these in here loosely. Really torque it once it's back on the bike, but go ahead and just tighten this up for right now. Get till it bottoms out. I'm trying to hold these apart. Put forward pressure on it right here and it'll kind of hold them into place. And you get your hands kind of up underneath it and over the back side. And you can kind of hold these where they should be sitting. All right, that one's in there. See, they'll want to just fall, right? And you kind of lift them up and kind of get them in there. Hand thread this back in. Those bolts are tight, but like I said, yeah, see we get a little bit of movement here. Now when we pump up the brake here in a second, that'll go down somewhat. We gotta tighten this back up, click, click. Don't forget your little button here. This is basically just a safety that keeps it from any chance from that bolt ever backing out. Yeah, tight enough. And if you ever do strip this out, which can happen sometimes, you know, these, these get all this brake dust and grime in there. If that's the case, one thing you can do, since you have a big exposed piece right here and this bolt's basically ruined anyway, you can get a bit of vice grips on there, like some neo nose vices or something, you can usually crack this loose, spin it out, pull it out, and then throw that one away and get a new one. First things when you get these new pads put on, try not to slam on them. You're gonna need a little bit of time to break them in, to bed them in. A very micro small level your rotor's got some bends and curves in it and the pads kind of have to match that this is even more true if everything is new like don't think oh if i have a new rotors and new pads they'll both be perfectly straight no it's even worse uh so just like pulling out of my neighborhood for instance um <laughs> it'll catch you off because you go grab the front brake and it's kind of like oh while that's going on you want to you don't want to just go out and like bury your front brakes like oh i'll break them in real quick that's not the thing to do you actually can cause really hot spots on the rotor and different spots and it's heating up unevenly and you can glaze the pads over now of course if you have to if someone's pulling out in front of you and you think you're going to die slam on your brakes don't be stupid see i'm just kind of coasting down here i'm not trying to Let's break them in now! <laughs> I know I'm normally all about the hard break in, but not for uh, not for brake pads. I don't have anyone behind me here. See, not real fast. 
this doesn't do anything to help the brakes. I just wanted to do it. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, that's actually not... Now they're already starting to work a lot better. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I think that's a cop. I should have done those paths at the same time I did the steel braided lines. You remember back then we were doing so many mods at once to this thing that uh, I think it just sort of fell on the back burner and I never got around to it. Oh yeah, that brakes are working good now. You guys are wearing Crocs with green socks. Crocs with green socks. <laughs> How you doing? They're camo Crocs with green socks. This is starting to get us some Dr. Seuss dude. Driving my dogs, drangle around, smoking my vape. <laughs> Camo Crocs, green socks like my wheelies a whole whole lot well there you go easy enough mod to do whether you're upgrading your brakes or just doing maintenance or both i think the whole job took me like 30 minutes that's with filming so you're talking honestly 10 minutes or so oh you're not the one that's barking it's that one look how scared he is what are you doing is this like a chihuahua thing i don't know you know what i love you come here come here don't do that don't do that it's fine Oh, uh oh, ah. you got the ugliest parts of a dachshund and a chihuahua in you. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Is he 